Okay, I think we are getting there. It's moving and it's redirecting. All right, hey guys, so welcome to this week's Change School TV episode 44. And I am back after being away for a while. Um, and Salonia, my PIC, is taking a creative sabbatical. But tonight's session actually is one of the first sessions that we're holding with one of our super awesome collaborators who you have heard from a couple weeks back called Nemo Asham. So, you know, I am not going to take too much of the time to start today's session because he has got so much to share with us today. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a back seat and you know, manage the comments or any questions that you guys have, but there's just a couple of things I want to start with. Um, first off is if you're watching this live and you think someone is going to be value or have benefit from tonight's session, um, which is all about leading your way and being unapologetically you, which I absolutely can't wait to hear what Nemo has to say about this because um, you know, we are all big fans about living unapologetically yourself. So if you find or you know someone who's going to have value with tonight's session, please do share it on your Facebook pages, um, you know, and get as many of your friends here to watch us live. Um, however, if you uh, can't watch us the entire episode, no worries. We are going to be, you know, saving this episode on our Facebook page. Um, and the more interaction that you guys give, you know, tonight, the more you're going to get out. And I know Nemo is going to share some things similar along those lines, too. But um, so really tonight's session, as I said, is about leading your way and being unapologetically yourself. And Nemo is going to take the floor. And, you know, um, I think this is something that we've been really looking forward to because, it's different and it's having someone else on our change school TV who's, you know, talking about similar things, working in a similar space and really working with individuals to be authentically themselves and live boldly and, you know, take lives and their life in control. So without further ado, I am going to sign my face off this until the end, and I'm going to welcome again Nemo, um, and he's going to kickstart tonight's session. So I'll see you guys all at the end, and over to you, Nemo. All righty then. Thank you so much for that introduction there, Grace. Thank you so much for this opportunity to really just come spend some time out with, uh, with all of you, and uh, hello there humans of change. It's good to see you again. Nemo Ashong here from Enjoyment. I'm really excited for um, the, to continue the series, the collaboration that we have uh, right here uh, with the Change School. So today, uh, today you get a lot of Nemo, which is going to be some, some good times. Um, but really here, as much as you're going to get uh, a, a change in the face here, I want to start off here with just a quick reminder. For this entire session here, I'll be sharing some of my experiences. I'll be sharing some of the tools, the frameworks, the ways that you can look at your world and look at how you are showing up in your world so you can be more powerful, more authentic, and to get more of what you want through your changes. As I said, each and every one of those there, the focus though is on you. The focus is on you. And so I'm gonna invite you I wasn't planning on this, but let's do this right now. I'm going to invite you to just find yourself and find yourself wherever you are. You might be wherever you are in life, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on the replay. Give yourself the gift of just settling into this conversation. Find yourself, find a comfortable place in your seat, wherever you are. If you're washing the dishes, like pay attention. <laughs> um, but really get yourself into a place where you can really get what you came here for. Because you've taken an hour. You've taken an hour and you've dedicated it to yourself. And a lot of people out there are not doing that. A lot of other people are caught in whatever the flow of the day has for them. A lot of people are sitting there waiting and wondering what they're going to do with their change. And you're sitting here being active, being proactive by carving aside time for yourself. I want to acknowledge that. I want to give kudos to you for that. And I also want to just take some time to just allow you to get what you want. 
from this. Because it's quite easy to let this hour just go on by and for you to miss most of it. I'm in no rush here today. I have an agenda. It's a loose agenda. We'll see where things go. Because quite frankly, I'm here to serve you. And the question I have is, are you ready to serve yourself? Let's start out here with just making sure we're here on the same page. So I have an objective today. My objective is to help and enable humans of change to experience a path of being unapologetically you. And I say unapologetically you because that's something that really resonates and means something strongly for me. You might have seen me in a few a few weeks ago when Soul got a chance to uh, really pull out my uh, my change story and really just see how I've navigated change through my career, um, especially. And that story that we sh that I shared there was something that was very meaningful for me. Uh, my experience in life has been through one of change. My experience of life has been through one of feeling on the outside, feeling like I don't really belong and not necessarily sure how to get in. And using all that to help embolden me now and help me realize now in my adult life, how these things that I stumbled through as a child, as an adolescent, as a teen, how they've all come together to bring a new sense of being, a new sense of operating my world. For me, I'm in a certain place right now. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach. And so I'm gonna be bringing all that to today's conversation. But you may not be there. You might be looking to change your career. You might be looking to change your location and where you are in the world. You might be getting ready to embark on a new journey in a romantic way or through another relationship. Know that I am holding the space for whatever your change happens to be. And it might even be a change that you're not even planning for. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Know that I'm holding this space in this conversation for all of you. I'll probably spend most of my time talking about it through the lens of career changers, just given that I know a number of you are thinking about that right now, shifting when it comes to your, your career. And I've had some experience there, uh, but I've had a, a lot of experience with a lot of different things. So I want to just make sure I create that space for you uh, as we go along here. And I'm also going to encourage you to go back, if you haven't yet, to go back and watch the episode that I was in earlier. Um, there's a lot that I may not jump into, dive into details in here around how I navigated that change, how I led my way through that change, and some of the specific tangible things that I did along the way. That's a great conversation and some really great insights in there. So I, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and watch that. But since we do have the time here together, let me start out here with a couple of agreements that I'd love to set with you. Normally I would go back and I would hear the word I or someone saying yes to all this year. So um, if you could, um, I'm gonna just take it from this place here. As you're watching this, whether you're watching this live or recorded, I wanna make sure we enter these agreements together. And so with after, at the end of the agreements that I set forth, if it's something that works for you, just go ahead and type in the words, I agree. And this is going to set an agreement, a designed alliance between us that carries through the test of time, through the flow of every through space to a place where the two of us are coming into this conversation. And that's really all that it is. It's really just two of us having a conversation. So for today, the agreements that I love to set up are this. They're my, they're my five agreements no matter what. So <laughs> it works. Uh, the first is that I'm going to hide nothing and hold nothing back. You might see me actually have a visceral reaction or I might like, have a, like a, something come on my face when I know that I wanted to hide something from you. But because I just set out this as an agreement, you're going to hear me say things. Some things may not even be flattering for me, but if it's in service of you, I'm going to do that. And that's because the second agreement is that I'm here to serve you and not please you. Serve you and not please you. I'm going to say things that you may not normally hear. And I'm going about this in a way that you may not normally uh, have an experience of when it comes to these kinds of things. And that's okay. That's my choice because I'm here to serve you. The third thing is that I have a track record of having life changing conversations. And I don't plan on this conversation to be any different. So I'm going to be bringing all of what I have to the table for here. I'm going to be bringing, I'm going to bring up the topics that I feel make sense. 
And I'm really going to just allow things to occur beyond the surface. Because that's the only way we can have life-changing conversations. That's the only way we can have transformation. And I choose to lead. And I want you to be able to see that as it's modeled. It's used to lead my change. The fourth thing is that I'm not coming in as a teacher, a mentor, or a guru, which might be surprising. I'm a coach, and I enjoy that. So I'm going to bring my unique skill of being able to help people see their world differently, helping people be able to identify the things that make them different, identify their unique gifts, skills, and abilities. I'm going to bring that to today's conversation. I don't believe that I have your answers, but what I can do is help you live into and ask yourself more powerful questions. I'm excited for that. I'm excited when we get into that. All right. And then the fifth thing is that I'm going to lead this conversation, but you're in control. I'm going to lead this conversation, but you're in control. What you get out of today is on you. I'll create the space, but how you choose to show up, how much you choose to focus, how much you choose to apply these things, how much you choose to listen for insight as opposed to information, listen to allow the listen for transformation as opposed to agreement. All of that is in your control. How much time you set aside for yourself, whether or not you want to take, listen to this in the middle of a busy room, or if you want to go ahead and set aside some time for yourself in a different place. You are in control, but I will lead. So those are my five agreements that I need for here. And the last one here, I've been, I've been adding it recently because just because of the people that I play with uh, in, in coaching and such, I might as well bring it in here because I think knowing, knowing the humans have changed, it's going to be very applicable. The sixth thing here is that I want to create a brag zone, like a place where we can just share the great things that, we, that we've done without having to feel arrogant, without having to feel humble, um, just without having to feel sorry about any of the things that we've done. Bring it all up to the table. Because if without that, if we don't have all of who we are in here, we're not really going to be able to create the transformation. We're not really going to have that change that we want in the way that we want it. So I'm not going to hold back either on that. I've done some great things done some really some some less than great things too and i'll share them with you as well but i want to make sure that we have that space here with that intention that we're coming into this today's conversation so this works for you again whether you're watching this live or recorded type the words i agree into the comments and set this as a covenant for yourself as a way that you are showing up to this you've agreed to how we're going to go and play in this this game We're going to talk today about being unapologetically you. Hmm. I, like the, the words unique and unapologetically you come to mind. And I really want to have this as the context for today's conversation. Because what we're talking about here is about leading your change. I have a tendency to look at, I said, I'm going to help you look at your world in a different way. And one of the things that I have is I typically have one of three different lenses on or at least I have one of three different ways of seeing the world. The one is kind of a, a pessimistic view. The second is like a neutral. This is like everything is good. So there's bad, there's good. And then there's the third, which is optimistic. And that's just like great, awesome, excellent, stupendous, outstanding. Like I just have like words for that. That's, I choose to play in that third place. So I say that here. Because this is not a conversation about just coping with change. If I would put that in like more of the pessimistic area, coping with change. It's happening to you and you have to cope with it. It's not a conversation about navigating change. It's like, okay, I got this. I can navigate this. Whatever change is coming my way, I'm dancing, I'm moving. Yeah, I got this. This is good. I'm good. No, this is a conversation about leading your change. This is a conversation about you being in control and you deciding where you want your change to go, how you want your life to look as a result of this, how you want your career to look, your relationship to look, like bringing all of that into place so that change doesn't happen to you. You are the change maker. You're the change leader. That's the game that we're playing here today. It's fun. <laughs> Trust me, it's a good time. <laughs> so think about that and allow whatever needs to shift like, to, to, to do so to really allow yourself to come into this conversation that way. 
And if there's anything about that, anything about how we've even started up this conversation that's made you feel some type of way, as I like to say, either uncomfortable or impatient or whatever it is, check yourself and like just see what that's about. There's nothing, there's no, nothing right or wrong in this conversation, but see if there's information in that for you. Where else are you just rushing to get to the end? And how is that impacting your ability to lead change your way? Where else are you feeling these sensations? And how might they help you be more successful in, in the future? Just tap into that, ch check, in, check in along the way. I think it, like the reason I feel that strong urge to have you check in along the way is because I really want you to make sure you get something from it. And so we're gonna be talking about being unapologetically you. And I'm gonna define unapologetically you as it, as it works for me. What that is, and, and actually why I feel is important when we're talking about leading change. When we're leading change, we're doing something that very few people out there do. In fact, I heard a, um, a statistic from Grace. She, she had mentioned a, a book. So maybe Grace, if you can add that to the comments, um, that'd be wonderful. But there's a st statistic out there that says 5% of people actually go out and create the change that they want in their life. The other 95% are coping. The other 95% are just navigating. But 5% are actually out there leading it. And if that's the case, if you're choosing here to be one of the 5% that actually takes your life by, like, in your own hands, then there's going to be something fundamentally different about how you approach this that than the way that others do. And because of that, to be honest, there's a portion of it that's gonna be incredibly scary. There's a portion of it that's gonna be incredibly vulnerable. There's a portion of this that's, ah, sheesh, I was hoping to just run through this, but something came through my mind and I said that um, I'm here, and I'm not gonna hide anything and hold anything back. So what I don't want you to know about me right now is that in preparing this year, I really had to wait until like the last hour to really bring this to life. And um, it was something where I had in mind, I knew I was gonna do this year for a very long time, but I knew I had to wait. And a lot of me wanted to come out with this polished way of being for you. Just like, just wow you with, with the presence and the way that I've laid everything out here. But if I'm gonna ask you to be vulnerable, if I'm gonna ask you to be authentic, then I need to make sure I'm doing that off the bat for myself, because that's where real power comes in. That's where being unapologetically you comes in. If you have the ability to be all of who you are, good and the bad, to be vulnerable and authentic in any given moment, then no matter what happens with the change around you, you can still stay firm. I can kind of consider it like a, like a tree. What we're talking about right now, when we talk about unapologetically you, it's about building deep roots. Roots that will allow you, no matter what storm comes your way, to be able to continue to continue growing upwards towards where you're actually going. So let's spend some time here. And I'd like you to just use the comments uh, as you have availability to them. And just let us know. What does being unapologetically you mean for you? Why did you decide to watch this video? What does it mean for you? What's in it for you? What do you want to be available to you three years from now that wouldn't be available to you if you didn't lead your change, if you didn't choose to be unapologetically you? Take some time to think about that. And here's what's really uncomfortable for me. What I want to do is just keep running on. But I'm actually going to take a minute and just sit here and give you some time. All right, great. So take that if you need more time and you're watching this later, go ahead and pause it. Like, but really understand why are you here for this session? So I wanna kind of approach this here through a number of different ways. 
the first thing that's coming to mind here is a framework that I use to really understand and really not, not just understand, but to really integrate being unapologetically you. And the framework is first to discover, to embrace, and then leverage the unapologetic you. So let's spend some time real quick, just diving into a little bit of things around the discovery phase, see what shows up here and go from there. All right. Um, let's see, where do I want to start here? So when I think about uh, being unapologetically you, there's almost like a canvas that, that I think about. And in its core, at the core of that, that canvas is all these things related to discovery. This is about understanding if you are the product, what is, what is all the things that are important to you? So that when you go forward, you're moving things in alignment with that. I know how I wanna do this. So a lot of times we'll enter a conversation, we'll enter a change, we'll enter a place of leadership where we're right here. And the place that we wanna go is up here. Like, this is where we are, this is where I wanna to get to. And we ask ourselves like, how do we get there? How do we go, go forth and make sure we get to that possibility? What we're spending time on right now is if you put this into any kind of map or something, you need to know your starting destination and your ending destination. What I've found is that for a lot of people, their starting destination is not necessarily where they think it is. And as such, their path to try and get to their end destination is skewed from the very beginning. It's like if you, if you just took someone's uh, directions from wherever they were and you just turn left because the directions said turn left, it's not going to get you where you want. So I'd like to say to spend some time exploring that. And there are, diff there are different elements I look at when it comes to this kind of discovery portion. But the, let me just go ahead and listen to you and we can explore them as, as it makes sense. So the first one are your values. What are the things that you value in your life? I had an opportunity before I came out here to Singapore. I was working at a tech company and I was in their, um, their people experience team. So it was my job to really foster and champion the culture there. And to this day, I still know what those values are. To learn and teach, to see and improve the whole system, to empower our customers, and to make greatness happen. And the thing about that is that on an organizational level, those values trickled through everything that was done. They were rewarded, they were the lens in which things were, were, were looked at and were the ways that we went about approaching things. This works for an organization and it also works for you as an individual to understand what your values are and then to make sure that your values can then go forth and align with the change that you're looking to get. So I'll tell you my five personal values. One, to be more you. Two, to give and grow abundantly. Three, to explore new possibilities. Four, build meaningful relationships. And five, demonstrate your value and your values. This last one was pretty interesting here um, because I think there, I, I mentioned this the last time we talked, but when one of the ways that I've been unapologetic in the way that I've navigated my change has come from and actually led my change. Thank you, I'm catching myself in, in real time. But it's come from that aspect of demonstrating my values. When I was looking to change my career it, from actuary to getting into human resources and doing culture work and learning development, it was about being able to express what I actually stood for and then show that through the way that I crafted my resume and through the various things that I did along the way. For example, for every single interview that I had, I came back, the role I was going for was around community and really bringing, bringing together that, the, the culture there. So for every interview that I had, I went forth and I made a video afterwards. For me, that was me showing that like how much I valued these things. I'm gonna explore new possibilities. I'm gonna build a meaningful relationship with you right off the bat and I'm gonna take it to that next level. So finding ways to, if you have an understanding of what your values are, it gives you a chance to be able to move forward in a way that can be very much aligned with you. And it's making me think really quickly here. Um, a lot of times people will come and they'll say, hey Nemo, like I wanna work with you. I wanna like, I wanna become like more authentic. I wanna show up more powerfully in, in the world. Like I just need a roadmap to get to where to where to go. 
And it's funny for me because what I've come to realize is that your roadmap, your roadmap is your experiences. It's actually a little bit of the past to understand like what has gone right for you, to understand what you, where you actually are and what, what actually lines up with you. The fun part there is that there's a path and the path then to me, the path is just to go through it and be you, to be, a, to be uniquely you through all this wilderness, through all the changes coming up there. Like, how can you do it your way? Um, and then the last thing here is that if you have the roadmap of, of your, of your experiences, the things that you love, the things that you, that you, that brought you to this point, we have the path, which is for you to continue moving forward. And then it's like, how do you navigate that path if the roadmap has only gotten you to this place, right? You're creating the change that no one else has done before. You're leading your change. You're one of that 5%. That comes down to your compass, your compass, like a way for you to navigate change in, in, in real time. And so I'd like to make sure that you have, that, that I have a great understanding of my, my values. Um, and that you also have an opportunity to look through and say, what are, what are the values that I would have? What are the things such that in any given moment, if I have a choice of acting one way that is perhaps less, uh, more apologetic uh, and less unapologetic, um, what are the things that I have to help me know what my true north is? What's the thing, what's the, what are the values that I have that will help me know, okay, this is actually more in line with the possibility that I want to create even if it's more difficult in the short term. There's a reason why we're having the conversation this way, because every part of this is in alignment with my values. There are other parts here that are also in, line, in alignment with the other parts that make up my core, that make up my compass. Uh, and that is my unique skills. For example, I really did want to come in here. I really thought, I was like, all right, I need to come in here have like a training thing and to go all the way through bullet by bullet, teach these things here. I'm like, no, I'm really great at coaching. How can I bring that element into this conversation? How do I create that kind of space? If I'm, if that's what I'm amazing at, then why wouldn't I be doing that? It's the reason we started out our call this way. The reason we started out this conversation this way with the agreements right off the bat with taking some time to slow down and make sure that you're getting what you want from this, this session here, because that's, that's how I shine. <sighs> All right, I'll go ahead. <laughs> I'll go ahead and share something with you here. Uh, every once in a while, a story will come to mind and I'll just put it out there. Um, this one here uh, is again from my experience, but um, I used to work in consulting and we had milestone trainings that took place every time you got promoted. And I had a, a recent promotion and I was at a milestone training that brought in all the other senior consultants uh, together and who had recently been promoted. And to tell you the truth, I was having a great time. I was in my element, I was in a small group there. Um, there was a little bit of, you know, just multiple personalities coming together <laughs> and seeing how they all uh, come together in a simulated training environment. And so there was, you know, there was some rub that, that, that took place, but. I actually enjoyed navigating that and um, to the point that someone came by and said, hey, I've noticed that you, you're handling this situation really well. You're, glue, you're the glue on this team. Well done, um, which felt great. What didn't feel great was when we had to end our week and um, we had to give a presentation based on all the work that we had done at, up until that point. And the night before, similar to this, I'm like, all right, typically speaking, I'm not one to go ahead and overly prepare because once I try and prepare, I, I actually lose my vulnerability and I lose my authenticity and I'm just far less powerful. That may not be the same for you. And it certainly wasn't the, the case for uh, one of the, the members on my team. And so in the evening, I just saw her kind of like pass, uh, pacing like up and down a certain area uh, as she was like reciting and practicing the words. And I was like, oh, you know what? You do that. I have my thing. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, the next day shows up. We're all presenting our results. And uh, the person who was evaluating us was actually my big boss. Like, So out of all the different people there, this was actually someone that was in my direct line, uh, uh, reporting line. And the person, I had everything kind of worked out in my mind. I had the numbers. I was an actuary. This was going to be an easy slide to do. Um, but right before me was the person who had spent all that time uh, going back and forth, pacing and practicing all her words. And to this day, I've, I've told this story in the past and I still can't get it 
like give it justice. Um, but she's a fast talker. <laughs> she knew exactly what she wanted to say, and she had she had more words than I thought could come out uh, in a certain period of time. And it was just I remember standing on the side and just being like myself, this feeling, this feeling, like ah. Uh. And so my turn came up, and I tried to emulate what she did. I talked faster than I normally would. I came off in um, a less personable way, a less vulnerable way, um, a less authentic way. And to be honest, it was awful. It was bad. It derailed everything um, to the extent that the big boss came by later on. It's like, everyone here did a great job. But Nemo, I know you. What happened there? What was that? Um, and it was, it was a real turning point for me. It was a real turning point because that showed me one time where I was off of what was the real me, when I was off of being unapologetically me through this change. And I chose, and it was, a, it was an important time because it was at a promotion time. So it was a, a, at a pivotal, pivotal change moment for me, where I realized that if I'm gonna play this game, if I'm gonna be incredibly successful, I have to do it my way. I have to use my voice, it has to be my tone, it has to be vulnerable, authentic, Nemo's way of being powerful. And so I offer all these things here to give you that opportunity to look through it. So I mentioned uh, the areas of when it comes to discovery that, that you can take a look at. They include your values, your standards. My coach once told me, Nemo, you get what you tolerate in life. You get exactly what you tolerate in life. I find it very interesting when people are like, and then I could, then the, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I had, and I had, had it up to here. I just said no more. You know, there's all, like these kinds of phrases that come along with it. So at that moment, they change their standards. And so I'm going to ask you, what standards do you have right now? What are you tolerating in your life? Going back to the, the core of it all, what are your unique skills? We talk about values, we talk about standards. What are your unique skills? What are the things that only you can do? And I mean this here in terms of a distinction that I'll say between like just being good at things, right? What are those, what's that small segment where I call it 100X? You can get 10 times the results of other people using 10% of your energy. 10 times the results for 10%, right? So in there, you get 100x of those results. What is that for you? Some people call it the zone of genius. It's uh, Guy Hendricks calls it that um, in, the, in his book, the, the Big Leap. But what are those things that you're uniquely qualified to do? I do video often. The reason I do video is because I have a unique skill of being able to relate this way. I tried. You, Jeez, this is not this is not fun hiding nothing and holding nothing back, but it's the truth of it all, right? I, I sent out an email today that took me to invite some people to something that I really wanted to get them to come to. But the process of writing the email took longer than creating the videos, took longer than a lot of these different things here. Because it wasn't really hidden to my unique strengths. And so going forward, I'm just creating videos and I'm sending them to people. So having that understanding. And look, you can see, even with an understanding of it, you might come off in a way where you don't always get to do, you don't always show up the way that you want to. But being able to have, to know what the, your values are, to know what your standards are, to know what your unique skills are, to know what your purpose is, to know where you get energy and what drains you of energy. If you're able to increase your awareness of this here, I'm not promising a perfect experience through the change, but what you can do is to be in real time continue to lead, continue to make adjustments and to understand, okay, how am I going to practice my way into something better the next time? How can I navigate this better? So let's bring this all here within the context of uh, shifting your career, because I want to just try and bring all this in, into, into play. And I think the big thing here comes out was you're looking out to, the, to, to your career. Where can you go by and see what your roots are? What are the things that you stand for? And how are you using that to uh, encourage or guide your job search? How are you using that to inform what you actually even approach? How are you using that to see what kind of cultures you want to be a part of and where you can really add the most through your unique skills and strengths?
I think it's a good time to move on. If you have any questions around discovering value standards, unique pur skills, purpose, energy, um, leave a comment, let us know, and we'll get back to it at the end. Um, this is a good time to move on to the second part here. So we've discovered, the next thing here is we wanna embrace. And really embracing here, to me, it's just about owning all of you, owning all of who you are, the good, bad, the ugly, the awesome, the amazing, the spectacular, the outstanding. Uh, and within the context of leading your change, it really comes down to owning all of your experiences, especially those ones that, uh, that, you're, that you're not proud of or that you don't see being a part of how you can get, how, like what will get you to your next level. Finding a way to own all of that and really embrace it is a wonderful way to be unapologetically you. So what I find, especially when, when uh, I myself have been going through this um, and working with others here is when it comes to embracing things, there's actually, there's actually something that, that typically happens in our, in our mind, which is around the questions we ask ourselves. Right? I said earlier here, I'm not here to provide answers for you. I'm here to help you live into more powerful questions. And I wanna spend a little bit of time helping you with the skill set of, of coming up with more powerful questions, coming up with more empowering questions. So I'm gonna give you a few questions that I typically hear people wrestling with, and then give you some variations of uh, what might uh, be a more empowering question. So you can get a chance to, to see this, experience it, and see what is the question that's been running through your mind. As you hear me bring this up, what's that, what's that really disempowering question that you probably don't tell anyone else out there, but it keeps going through your mind? Maybe it's, who am I to take on this role? Or do I even have enough skills? Or if they really knew like what I, who I was and what I've done, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want me, or this is way beyond, whatever it is, you all have those, those questions. For me, my thing is, my, it's a lot of who am I. I have a thing around belonging um, and, and being accepted and, and not being alone. Um, and I have a, a sentence that continues to run through my mind, which is, I'm not supposed to be here. So we all have them. The thing that becomes here, and it might continue to, to play in your mind even afterwards, the thing that becomes is, can we give ourselves a chance to elevate ourselves out of the quagmire, out of the quicksand of where that, that quest, those disempowering questions take us and give ourselves a chance to like dance on top of it toward what we really want? Um, yeah. <laughs> so here goes a few of those questions, right? Uh, the first one is, who should I be to get this role? Um, what do they want from me? How do I check the boxes on that? You know, what boxes do I check on that? that there's a similar theme there around who do, who do they want me to be in order to get this role? From there, I'm going to give you an opportunity to look at it from a more empowering way. Uh, this, one, this one was fun for me when I made my, my first career change, which is who do they need to be for you? Who do they need to be? What needs to be going on in that organization, on that team, for your, from your manager, to, so, that, so that when you come in with all of the experiences which you're choosing to own, how do, like, who do they need to be for you? Is this the right place for you? Is this a place that's going to help you grow? And just shifting a little bit of that, that, that power back to yourself changes the way that you, you can show up in that conversation, show up during your interview, show up in the way that in your resume, show up in a way that you choose to showcase various things about, about yourself and help you navigate that in a manner that is, is quite frankly, just more empowering. How do I fit in here? So you should know that, like, I just have to put this out there. For me, when it, especially because belonging is a big thing for me, fitting in uh, is, um, I think the words that kids are using nowadays is a trigger word. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's, I hear it and my, my, Mind goes, rah, how do I fit in? Going back to the lenses, there is, you know, you know, being discriminated against, to me, fitting in is the middle path. And then there's the third option, which is how do I add value? And so when you have that question around how do I fit in here, I'll give yourself a chance to re-experience re it from a different perspective. How can my experience how does the way that I approach life, approach questions, 
how does my experience with teamwork and doing navigating various areas of ambiguity or actually following a process from beginning to end, how do all of those things add value in this situation? And how do I help demonstrate the value that they add? Going back, this one here is part of my, my value, so I'm gonna add that one in. Um, but really giving yourself a chance to re-explore that question to something that if you came up with the answer would give you, would just kind of catapult you for it. You know, I think that's, that's really where this is coming from because all the questions, the disempowering questions, they're real questions. They're real problems. They're real anxieties. They're real things in the world. Like, I don't want to downplay that. I'm not out here saying like these things don't exist. I'm just saying that even if you had your answer, it probably wouldn't get you what you wanted. So why not ask a question that would? Why not ask a question that moves you closer to that possibility? Or if, if anything, brings that possibility to you. Helps you come from the person you wanna be. Help you come from that role that you wanna have and bring it right into the earliest stages of your conversations. What most people don't know about me is that I create a lot of my own like scenarios. I Even at the beginning of this call, I came in here and I said, this is how I'm gonna show up. Here goes my agreements. I'm running this, I'm, I'm gonna lead, but you're in control. And so going forward from every moment afterwards, people understand this is how Nemo is gonna show up. And I think there's a part of you that, that gets this on like you're experiencing it right now. It's part of you that also probably gets it from the standpoint of just various suggestions people give you. It's part of the reason why I don't like to come out as a teacher or a mentor because Quite frankly, if it doesn't line up for you, it doesn't, doesn't really make sense. I'm not here to motivate you. That's something that's, that's your responsibility. As a leader, that's your responsibility, right? Uh, but there's this thing that comes out here around like being able to set the stage for you. And sometimes suggestions come your way and you're like, well, that's easy for you to do. I'll use my own examples. That's easy for you to do, Nemo, but I'm not you. Have you ever said that? That's easy for you to do, you know, fill in the blank. But I'm not you. What comes to mind, what makes me smile here is that it basically suggests that there's a set of actions that are available to you based on who you are. There are certain things that are available to everyone else in the world, but because of who you are, you don't have access to them. And to be able to play with that then, it then goes and says, okay, then let's look at who you are. Let's support that. And that's why we're coming out with being unapologetically you. There are things that you will do in your career, in your life, in your business, and whatever change you choose to navigate, whatever change you choose to lead. Thank you all, because you're helping me elevate myself up. There are things that, that you will do that you would have never thought you would do but because you have chosen to come and be unapologetic, because you've discovered your values, your standards, your unique skills, your purpose, your things that drain you and, and fill you with energy, because you've embraced all of your experiences, the good, the bad, the things that you that you have been turning to the side, the and, and flipped the disempowering questions to something that's far more empowering, far more powerful for you. You find yourself in the moment acting in a way where it makes complete sense based on the fact that you're finally being unapologetic, based on the fact that you have those strong roots such that you can navigate everything else coming forward. Another empowering question that, um, that I love to go with um, to really help embrace, embrace things, because I'll, I'll be honest, belonging comes up a lot for me. Uh, even in this conversation right now, you know, as I'm talking live in real time, it's the question is, who am I to say this? Should I be doing this? Am I actually teaching too much? Am I giving them enough space? All these things are going on through my mind. And I'm willing to put all that out there and set it to the side because I ask myself this other question when they do. The question comes, if I already belonged, what would I be doing then? Another variation of that is if People accept me, and not even just accept it, that's the middle right there. If people celebrated and valued me because of who I was, 
And as such, I could do no wrong. How would I show up? That's the question I ask myself, which led to a lot of what you're experiencing right now. That's the question I'm continuing to ask myself, even as I'm telling you right now. You might ask yourself this question as you're shifting your career. And maybe it looks like this. If I already had this job, how would I act now? If this job was already mine, then what? How would I, how would I be behaving? Who would I be? And how would I show up? I shared this in uh, the last conversation, but take a look at it. There's the, uh, I dive into um, how I came into the interview process with these questions already answered, like pretend, like really I brought my own plan and we started navigating and walking through it together with my manager. She never asked me, but if that was my job already, that's exactly how I would act. It's exactly how I would act. So we've now looked a little bit here. I'm gonna, let me ask you this. Let me, all right, let's do this. I've been talking about vulnerability and authenticity. We're talking about being unapologetically yourself. If you're willing to do this here and this, and, even if you don't, there's a learning in there for you. But the most powerful question I can ask you right now is to take some time and write down in the comments. Actually, write down for yourself first. What is the one question that keeps coming up, that one disempowering question? If you have many, feel free to toss them on there. What is, what is a disempowering question that you have? It keeps repeating itself. And what's a more empowering way to look at that? What's a better question to answer? If you never needed to answer that disempowering question and instead could focus your energy and time, focus on creating something from a totally different place because you answered a different question, a more empowering question, what would that question be? Embrace that right now. And if you're really looking to make this real for you, when you, after you've written down the initial question and the starting question and the more empowering question, go ahead and make a comment and leave a comment that says DQ, which is your disempowering question, and ask that and put down the question. And then and the line underneath it, write EQ, your new question. DQ and EQ, put both of them out there. The fun thing about this here is that it only takes one person to show that level of vulnerability to create the change that you want. It takes one person to show up that to show up that way that can help open up different things that allow you to see that you're not alone. But if you're not being unapologetically yourself, if there's something in your response that makes you feel that you have to apologize for even having these thoughts, that it's that you can't be vulnerable in this, and even in the, the safety of change school, you're gonna find yourself rubbing against any real desire, any real ability to be unapologetically you. And I'm sorry to say this here, but you're not going to get there just by listening to this. You're not going to become unapologetically you by that. It actually takes a lot of practice. It takes being uncomfortable. It takes doing things that you wouldn't normally do and allowing yourself to feel what that's like for you and to see yourself on the other side of that to see yourself thriving as a result of the things that you've done. I spent a lot of time talking about my career change from being an actuary to, um, to being in tech. I haven't told you all about the t my change from being in tech to being an entrepreneur or from being in New York City to moving out to Singapore. That one was, that was wild. My wife, my wife and I came out here and we were, I'm like, I'm not going to Singapore. I'm not going to Asia, you know? Um, we found some things out there to allow us to do that, you know, and a lot of what we're talking about here, knowing my values, that's actually, that's actually what allowed me to come out to Singapore and come at it from a place of excitement because we, we, we found that we had different values. My wife valued, uh, travel and I valued growth. And I'm like, I have everything ready to go. I'm working on different things here. This is, this is the place for me to have growth. And because we both knew what our values were. We were able to enter into a conversation to create a new agreement, to create a new design alliance, to create a new goal, actually, where we were able to frame our experience here in Singapore as a way for us to both travel 
and for her to get the travel that she wants and for me to get the growth that I want. You're experiencing some of this growth right now. So just bringing all that in there, for any of you out there, it's not necessarily the easy thing to do, but I want to help you practice it. So we talked about discovering, we've talked about embracing. I want to leave time to see if there's any questions that come up here, but I want to talk about the last part here, which is leveraging, which is bringing out to life. And that's when you really put it into practice. I wish I can say it's a straight line from where, from, from, you know, where you are right now to that possibility. Typically speaking, I like to say, bring that possibility to life right now. Instead of it being one day I will be X, Y, and Z, or when I have the money, I'll do this. Or when I get the job, then I'll show up. If you notice, there's a secret thing that's been going on behind this whole thing, which is show up as that now. Show up as that now. And as you do it, you might find that you experience this. I call it like a little bit of a loop, a spiral, as you're going through iterations of learning what is it like to be unapologetically you. You're going through iterations of showing up sometimes as you really want to, and other times in a way that's that's less powerful. And using that to continue to give you more access, more information along the way. So you've had now a couple of different tools, one just different ways to look at um, how you discover things, you know, taking time to look at your values, uh, asking yourself, what are you tolerating in life? Um, looking at your unique skills and saying, how do I 100 access? What's the things that I do that I tend to get 10 times the results and it takes like 10% of the effort. I don't have to try. And yet everyone says, wow, what a great job. You're like, that thing? That was the easy thing. I want to talk a little bit here about your agreements and leveraging. And so one of the most powerful ways that I know to be able to to leverage all this is to be able to set agreements. Um, I actually made a video specifically about this here uh, for Humans of Change. Um, And you can access it by going to enjoyment.com slash CSTV. Uh, there's a video that I made specifically for you to walk through all that. It's, it's long uh, because it's, an act, it's like a full training on it. Um, but you'll find when I talk about agreements, what I'm talking about is what are the ways that, what are the rules, what are the uh, alliance, what are the, the agreements that, that you need to set forth to allow you to show up unapologetically yourself? If you've done the work to discover and you're working on iterating that, if you're embracing all of your experiences and owning that, and you're working on bringing that into life, what do you need to do to allow yourself to have that? You've seen some of them modeled in this conversation. I started this whole thing out here with my agreements. I knew that on this call, I wanted to grow. And so I have to set that, that space. I have to ask, do you agree to me hiding nothing and holding nothing back, to me serving you, and to me setting this up to be a life-changing conversation? You'll see this in the video, but what I find here is this. These agreements serve three different purposes. One, they allow me to be all of who I am. Allow me to take up as much space as I need to because we've agreed, we've come together, we've we've both agreed on this. There are no expectations out there. No expectations out there. We've set clear agreements. About, oh, I expected you to come in here and talk about this. I expected it to be like, expected this session to be like this, that, and the other. Nah, I call it Deadpool. And if you've ever watched the movie Deadpool, it's like that movie is irreverent and they come right off the bat in the first like two seconds. There's like middle fingers, there's names coming in. It's like who created this? And it's just everything's different. And within the first three seconds, you know what kind of an experience you're going to have. So how do you how can you craft agreement? So the first one is for you to, that gives you space. The second one is that it gives the other person space. You know how I'm going to show up. And you've agreed to it. You know that we're like where we're going to be in integrity. And you know that if something lines off that's out of that, you can call me out on it. When you can see me hiding something back, like Nemo, go ahead. What do you want to say? You now have that permission because we've set that agreement together. So see how in you setting up agreements, you actually give people even more permission to show up. You give people even more permission to allow you to be. And then the third part, and this is something I didn't realize at first, like I had learned a set of agreements from my mentor and I was just doing it as part of like part of the coaching process. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna create some space for myself. But the third part here comes out to probably one of the most valuable of them all, which is that it serves as a reminder to me. In setting your agreements and in 
explicit and explicitly putting it out there, you have a chance to really remind yourself in any situation, especially when you realize that it's gotten crucial, when you realize that you've come to a, a crossroad moment where you can choose to be as you were, the disempowered version, the part that's like, who do I need to be for you? Or when you're looking at things from a, a neutral or pessimistic point of view, compared to the, the other side of that crossroad where you can look at it as being optimistic or unapologetically yourself. So that there just allows you to continue to have some space as you go through it. I'm working right now on an agreement of asking for help. I'm vulnerable about it. I go up to people and I say, you know what? I don't know how to ask for help. Or actually what I say is, so I've gotten some feedback that I'm not very good at asking for help. And, you know, quite frankly, I'm working on it right now. So what I feel like I was doing was I was creating a space for you to kind of help me. But what I really need from you is bottom line and just get to it. All that there should give you more space to be you. All that should give you some space to leverage what, you've, what you're what you learning and also give you a chance to start embracing it, start giving you a chance to, to mess up, to fail, to be to go through the messiness of, of really leading your change. But knowing that at the other side of it, you actually get to get to the place that you want to be. That's the fun about this. And guess what? It's also fun during the process. So let's look at this here. I think we're we're in a good place here. Um, the agreements deep dive you can get by going to enjoyment.com slash CSTV and uh, you'll find some additional resources there to uh, help support you along the way. Uh, I'm gonna invite Grace to come join us again here to uh, see if there's any questions that came up, see if there's anything else that uh, where we should take the conversation um, and see if there's any comments that came up. I, I see that we're at time, I'm good. Uh, I'm here to serve and I, I have a little bit of flexibility. If we need to end, we need to end. Uh, but I want to put all that out there. Um, Grace, I'll let you take it away. Amazing. Thanks, Nemo. I was just uh, busy taking some notes here on the back. And um, we didn't have any set comments. However, we did have some um, well, we had com we didn't have a set questions, but we did have some comments. So, you know, I think just before I sort of go into them, um, I think I love the agreement side that you've shared, and um, it reminds me of that book from Don Miguel Ruiz, right? I don't know if I'm saying his name about the five agreements, um, and I think it's so important for people to have these agreements with themselves. Um, especially when you're moving through moments of, you know, lack of confidence or clarity and that those agreements just allow you to really sort of know the road that you want to go down and they are your guiding principles. So for us at The Change School, every time we run a session, um, you know, for corporates, we, we start with guiding principles, actually even for individuals. So I love it. So um, before I sort of share, I guess, some of the key points that I took away from it, uh, there was a lot, but I'm going to try and, and um, but they're all, I mean, like I kind of narrowed it down for sure, because I think they're all, all things that we've talked about, um, you know, when we first sort of connected as well. But I wanted to share um, Muriel's comments in particular, because I think when you started talking about embracing yourself and, you know, um, that self-worth side of things, um, Muriel was um, sharing how she just finished a mentorship session with her mentee and that she's, you know, super smart and a, an amazing individual. Um, but her trigger said, I don't deserve this. I want to make my boss happy. And, you know, that is something that I think we hear a lot of the times, right? Is that I don't deserve this. Um, or I'm not, you know, I I'm not there yet, or I don't have the experience, or I'm not worthy of getting X, Y, Z, right? And so I'll just read you the rest of her comments because as you were speaking through, um, there were certain things that she shared. And um, yes, focusing on your self-confidence and self-esteem, that's something that she did suggested as well. And, you know, that everyone is a work in progress, right? And I think that is something that I know Salonia and myself always look at. And if I think about some of the agreements for myself, one is always value investing in yourself and growing and, you know, um, 
and really knowing that it's okay. Like one of my favorite quotes is Oscar Wilde's quote around the wise, um, the well-bred contradict other people, the wise contradict themselves. And, um, you know, I am one to constantly contradict myself, not saying that I'm wise, but I just, I feel that, you know, when you're always, when there's so many things that you learn and that you're taking in and that, you know, today you may believe in certain things, obviously you have your core values, but I do feel that that's sometimes something that we feel like we shouldn't be contradicting ourselves, but actually like if you're constantly growing and you're constantly learning, then you should be. I mean, you know, there are some things that are core essentials, but actually as we move through life in different stages, these are things that we are always learning. And so we should be okay with contradicting with our, ourselves and not feeling like we have to have the right answer every time and that the answer we've shared is no longer okay for us to, to sort of take back, right? Yeah, do you mind if I speak on that really quickly? Yeah, go for it. So two things, firstly, you are wise. So that, that I know, that, that I've experienced. So thank you for that. Um, but that quote, what a gift. What a gift there. So thank you for that. I feel, I feel good. And it's interesting. Before I came on here, uh, I was thinking to myself, I was like, where are my haters at? Like, like that was just the question that came. Where are my haters at? Like, I don't get enough people saying, Nemo, this is like, what are you doing talking about this kind of stuff here? Da, 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 yada, yada. I'm like, how am I supposed to grow if yeah. I am not getting the other side of things? If I am not being able to, to sit down and be able to just explore? Like, I, like. It's that, it's that aspect of transformation, right? Um, and I think, I think one of the fun parts about this here that, that like brings all this together is like what we're talking about right now is re, like almost reinventing you in your own image, right? Mm -hmm. Like from, based on who you want to be, you know, not based on how, other, like how others expect you to be. That's really what we're getting at here. Um, the fun part about this is that you can keep doing it. <laughs> like, like who I am now was not who I was five years ago. Wasn't who I was like in, in 2017, a year ago, you know, like I'm consistently evolving. I'm consistently making those changes. So like, yeah, it, I think, I think if you didn't allow that, that challenge, if you didn't allow yourself to contradict yourself, you would kind of end up getting stuck. Yes, exactly. And I think you're right on the reinvention because I think a lot of people, when they've been in a career for so long, their identity is connected to that title or that um, position or, or that organization, right? And, you know, I think the beauty of when you're in flow is being okay with letting go of the identity that you were in, right, of who you were. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't, those things don't transfer or carry on to, you know, where you are. And that, that side of things, like you said, like discovering, right? And then embracing and embracing all parts of you. Um, and I think that is something that sometimes we shy upon, right? And um, we, we sort of only want to embrace maybe like a third of, of who we are rather than every element of us because that it has made us who we are and as muriel said right we are all works in progress um you know we are a never ending excel spreadsheet of a, a wip right yeah i i definitely agree with that but there is so yeah. i just wanted to finish some of your so she she said you know agrees definitely like um she's a facilitator but i am not you it's your responsibility to navigate your growth and change and i think that is another powerful thing that you shared and you know it's like whoever you work with you are there to hold that space and you are there to guide and sort of be that you know personal trainer slash guider to provide tools and resources and all of that, but you're not the one who's going to give them the answers. The answers are things that we can only find internally within ourselves. Um, and uh, so that's great. And, and she just sort of shared and continued, the agreements are to build confidence and self-esteem. Self and that's what I see in my mentorship journey. So many are lacking it. I love this mentorship, Judy. I make a difference. I'm not babysitting. Mentees must take charge. Steven Spielberg said something like, a mentor can only be motivated if the mentee motivated me, then I will be good at mentorship. I think such some really interesting things, Muriel, that you've shared. And um, I, I appreciate, you know, um, when people are 
able to comment a little bit more around what it is that they're feeling or taking away from what um, you know, we share in our Change Gold TV. So I don't know if you have anything to share back with Muriel, but I just really wanted to read you those comments because they kept on coming up in, you know, throughout today's session. Yeah, well, firstly, Muriel, I just want to thank you and acknowledge you for, for playing full out here. It seems that you are doing really great work uh, to help other people lead through their changes. And I just want to just like, I see that. I want to acknowledge you for that there. Um, that's cool. I, I recognize you. That's awesome. Um, the every, like so much of what you said just like resonated with me uh very strongly and it's it's something that's very interesting when it comes to self-confidence -conf self-esteem being able to actually take the action regardless of it's if it's there or not so it can continue to help that build in process like the, looking at the various things that come together to say okay how do we actually get to that confidence you know a lot of things out here where I'll tell you right now, the next time uh, we do a conversation like that, my confidence has gone up even more, right? Because I've just had this experience. So how do we, how do we help um, those that, that we have through this mentorship experience or as, as, that we help guide uh, also build uh, that confidence through action? And you just got, you're, you're getting me thinking here, Muro. And uh, I, I, I appreciate that because to be honest, I'm okay with contradicting myself even right now. <laughs> well, and, you know, Nemo, if you want, you can jump into the comments as well. Um, and, and, you know, after the session, if you want, or, or whenever you've got a free moment. Um, and she is here hearing you and she says, very cool. Also, also, yeah, I'll, I'll make that happen. That seems like fun. Cool. So I just want to, first of all, like before, um, you know, we wrap up like Nemo, I think it's um, a, a match made in heaven, um, you know, when we, we met with you and the connections that we had and, you know, um, Singapore is small, but sometimes, you, you know, like recently I met someone um, that we had so many mutual connections, but it took us 10 years, right, to meet, meet each other. Um, so it's fantastic that we've had the chance to meet you and I'm really, really looking forward to many of the other sessions that you're going to collab with us on the Changeful TV. And we're going to share that all with each of you guys, um, you know, as the weeks go by. But I think, you know, I just wanted to say, like, I love the whole idea of who do they need to be. I think that was really the biggest thing for me that stood out, right, is, of course, self-worth. I think self-worth and self-esteem and confidence are things that we see no matter what stage you're at and whatever changes you're going through. Change makes you feel like uh, you have lack of confidence, right? Um, it is these moments of uncertainty because we don't have control and we don't know what's going to happen that makes us have these moments of lack of confidence or self-worth. Um, and I think that's something that educators can do more from a younger age is really embodying, you know, or empowering the younger generation to have that self-esteem and self-worth. But I think what you said so powerfully was, who do you need to be, right, for them? Right. And but more so, who did they need to be for you? And I think that is something so often when we are in the position of the individual looking for work, it's always about, well, I need to change myself for them or I need to do this and all of that. And I think by shifting and reframing it to be like, who do they need to be for you is something that we always like are avid supporters and believers of because you're changing careers for a reason. Right. And as long as you're not hurting people along the way when you're being unapologetically yourself, you need to ensure that whatever direction you're moving in is aligned to your values, to what you believe. And they can change and that's OK. Right. But I think that to me is about reframing the way that we're looking at are finding that next career path. Right. And it's an interviewing process for both parties, not just for them. Yeah, there's, there's, that's spot on. And I, there's something that you said around um, the unapologetic part that I think it's, I, I really would be remiss if I didn't put out there. This is not a free pass to go off and be a bad person. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, it's really a way of saying, how can you own all of who you are and not having to apologize for who you are? Uh, there might be things that you do that, you know, if you need to say, sorry, please do. Um, but I think there, there's, and, and, there's something here around being able to do this within the context of whatever culture you're in, 
you know, you can be in Singapore, you can be all throughout the rest of Southeast Asia, you can be somewhere else. Um, but there are ways that you can still show up as, as, as you and have that still work for you. And as you're saying this here, it's like, yeah, to be able to have just that, just that bit, I really love it. You're making this change for a reason. And, and it's the reason that, that, I, that I go down and I talk about like the roots here, because like, if you don't get that right, if you don't understand like what your values are, if you don't understand why you're shifting, what's, what is it that's actually missing for you? If it's about like more money, great. Then that's like, that's something you can easily see. But if you're really doing this for a change to say, this is a life that I want to live, then it takes some time to slow down and say, okay, this is the life that I want to live. Absolutely. And it's like from the very beginning, it's not a thing that evolves. It's like, this is it coming from now, from now on, I am living this life. Yeah, totally, totally. I love it. And I think it's like, you know, we can always change our decisions, right? Yeah. Like it's never, it's never set in stone. And I think being okay, which is why I love, you know, uh, Oscar Wilde's quote, right? Because so often when people are making a change, they feel like this is it forever. But actually, you know, it, it's, we all have, it's like that, that when you're, I don't know if you've uh, ever heard of this when you're younger, younger, but it's like for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And it was like, you know, you have friends for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And I kind of look at that as well when you're looking at, yeah, for sure, your circle of impact, your, you know, the communities that you're around, um, some are there for a lifetime, some are there for certain moments, and then some just tend to show up more for a reason, you know, to like keep reminding you about something, and then they might never come back until like another pivotal moment comes, right? So um, I think with careers, it's sort of that thing too, right? Statistically, um, you know, we will change careers 10 to 12 times in our lives now, and most people are only staying in jobs for about two years plus, um, which means that change is always constant right yeah it's one of those things where i love that the little that we're talking about change here because to tell you the truth i think that's the it's part of like the new currency it's like it's like can you like being able and this is where i go from like navigating most people are going to get to a point where they can navigate like just given the way that the world is, is changing given the way that the, the career landscapes are changing they're going to get to a place where they can navigate and it's going to be that special few that choose can be the special like it's the special for you that choose to say like i'm gonna lead this my way ah uh, no 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 i just get excited <laughs> i just get like i'm like yeah go you like make this happen you know i love it i love it and so okay i'm mindful of everyone's time and you know it's just sometimes so you you just get embraced in 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 the moment but I want to sort of just, again, say a big thank you to you, Nemo, and um, stay up to date, guys, um, with Nemo being here on our show a little bit more over the next few months. But also, just if you're, if you're wanting to check it out, and I would highly recommend you guys checking it out, we've shared the link a couple of times in the post as well in the comments, but head on to enjoyment.com forward slash CSTV. So that is E-M-P-J-O-Y-M-E-N-T forward slash CSTV. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, Nemo, you know where to find Nemo. Um, he's either on our Facebook page or um, on his website, enjoyment.com. And uh, any last words, Nemo, for all of our Monday Mojo people? Yeah, um, there's one other thing. I want to give one more gift uh, this time around. Um, I am doing a, an in-person uh, event, an experience of sorts, uh, to really give get people a chance to take this out of the theoretical aspects of what does it mean to be unapologetically you and give you a chance to be seen by others, to be engaged in the conversations there. This is something I'm, I'm only right now, I only have two of these on the calendar for uh, for the next few weeks here. Um, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to do it again. I'm just like, I'm playing myself and I'm experimenting and expanding. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what I want to do is as a gift here to any uh, human of change here is to give them a complimentary ticket to, uh, to one of these uh, unapologetically you uh, explorations. So, uh, when they go to the to the site that you just named, uh, enjoyment.com slash CSTV, they'll see uh, a special code there. They can just use the, the code CSTV um, and they will uh, provide a, a complimentary ticket um, because 
I want to invest in you and in your your movement toward change. And I think that that's the that's the place I want to come from. So um, feeling I'm like, yeah, let's just let's keep going. Let's like let's keep this let's keep this momentum going here and let's give people an opportunity to keep taking action on this. Love it, love it, love it. And um, we'll be sure to share that as well with our communities. So those of you that are in our um, closed Career Shifters Facebook group, we'll also share that with you over the next few days. But of course, um, you know, head on to enjoyment.com forward slash CSTV and you'll be able to get all of that juice on there. And I'm super excited to hear how it all goes. Most so, definitely. Thanks guys for watching and um, we'll see you guys next Monday for our usual Monday mojo. And this time you'll have me for the next month. Um, so, <laughs> so stay tuned <laughs> and uh, yeah, have a great evening guys. Thanks again for watching and thanks Nemo. Thank you. Bye y'all. Hey Nemo. I just, Hi. I just,